How long would it take to catch a shiny Pokemon in every single area of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet? All 20. This is Area Locked, a series where I lock myself into each unique area in the game until I find a shiny, no matter how long it takes. And today, I still have three huge provinces left to conquer. So which one will we be taking on today? Well, all of them. Welcome back to the second episode of Area Locked, where I run around in circles, lagging for 12 hours a day in a children's game for your entertainment. And a quick reminder of the rules I'm personally following for this challenge. No outbreaks, no shiny power sandwiches, and I'm not even using Urban Mystica sandwich boosts at all. The only tool I have on my side is the shiny charm, which, don't get me wrong, is really nice to have, but as you probably saw from the last episode, does not protect me from the brutal reality that is just getting unlucky. And yes, you heard that right earlier. This episode, we are hitting all of the other areas in Pokemon Violet. East, West, North, and everything in between. Well, except for one. I've got a little something special planned for the finale in Area Zero, so definitely make sure you're subscribed to catch the final episode because uh, that one's gonna be pretty insane. So for my first hunt of the episode, I decided to venture over to the West Province. I actually already had a few targets in mind for this region, and all of those were new Generation 9 Shinies. The first of which was Mankey. See, Mankey's Shiny is, uh, kind of terrible, uh, but the new final evolution, Annihilate, is just too crazy cool not to hunt for, and despite the Shiny also being kind of terrible, I still wanted to say I had one. Western Province 1 is one of the few areas I've ever actually seen these clusters of Mankey, so I was kind of hoping those plus a level 2 fighting encounter boost sandwich I'd be able to sneak this first shiny in within a few hours. So after making my first sandwich of the episode, I rode off into the honestly kind of bland grasslands of Area 1 looking for a Mankey. Now, this might be a good time to talk about the extra rule I haven't mentioned yet in this challenge. If I run into any shiny Pokemon that I have previously caught in this area locked challenge, it does not count. So you could probably imagine my nerves when I start to see hordes of Palmy popping up with my fighting type encounter sandwich. I already didn't want a shiny Palmy last episode really, but at least it got me out of area four, okay? Look, little guy, you're cute. Don't get me wrong, but please just don't, don't turn red this episode, okay? Thanks, man. Thanks. What the heck was that, am I right? <laughs> After cracking an awful joke to myself about 30 minutes or so into the second area locked challenge, I stumbled upon a Pokemon that looked a little nauseous or something. Oh wait, no, that's just the shiny Mankey. And it wasn't even in a group, just out here chilling by himself. An absolutely amazing start to the Western province, hitting my target and getting it insanely fast. This was just a nice, juicy dose of luck to start it all off. Shiny number one out of Oh my god, I still had at least like 12 more shinies to catch just this episode. And I wonder if that luck is gonna continue. It does. The Asado Desert, a huge sandy area filled with a ton of honestly pretty cool Pokemon. But I did not care one bit about any of those pretty cool Pokemon. Except for one, this thing. The beetle that rolls around his giant ball of dirt, mud? <laughs> Let's stick with that, it's, it's mud. Surely it's not anything else. The reason I wanted this guy, Relor, so badly is, while its shiny form is one of the most unique out of any Pokemon in the entire game. I still had a bit of my fighting boost sandwich left over, so after driving around for a few minutes and realizing there were somehow still palmies everywhere in the freaking desert, I decided to procure this masterpiece of a sandwich and power up some bug type encounters for the Relor hunt. Now, this was a hunt I was pretty dead set on completing, so regardless of how unlucky I got, I was going to complete it and catch this golden buck. Through thick and thin, rain or shine, this Relor would be mine. So that was two minutes and 50 seconds, roughly? Okay, yeah, cool. Uh, what's up, Relor? So here we go again, I guess. Another start to the area lock I could really only dream of. Shiny Relor with its golden mud ball that has entirely new textures on it. And if there's ever a time to throw a luxury ball, it's now. Shiny number two in the Asado Desert 
is complete. Area 2 is actually a really small grassy area just north of the desert with a small stream of water and this little sea out to the west, but similar to the last area, I had one target that I wanted. Cyclozar, the modern day motorcycle dragon Pokemon. There's just one small problem with this hunt. After using a dragon and counter boost sandwich, you start to realize the Cyclozar are everywhere. Like, literally everywhere. They're the only dragon type that spawn here, which is great until you realize they run around at like 20 miles per hour, and half the time they just slam into you starting a battle and letting all the other cycles are outside the battle drive away and despawn. So I had to really try not to get run over by these things and also keep my eyes peeled for a lighter, tan colored dragon because I probably only had like a few seconds after spotting it before it just drove away. I also saw this one really strange Cyclozar that just kind of walked around like a creep and... Oh, all right, never mind, carry on. Now I want you guys to watch this clip carefully. Let's analyze my in-game response to this high pressure situation. So here I am, scanning the area. There's a lot of Cyclozars and I'm about 15 minutes into my first sandwich. Boom, that's a shiny. The clock is ticking, let's see how fast I react here. Nearly an instantaneous lock-on. Pure, raw focus here. Follow up with an immediate speed boost? Well played there. No time to save the game here, baby. Shiny Cyclozar. Thunder Wave and a Luxury Ball to finish it off? Absolutely flawless execution right there. Also, my luck is still just absolutely disgusting. And that was three shiny Pokemon in one hour, by the way. Casa Roya Lake, one of the biggest areas in the entire game. A huge lake in this really cool forest area covering basically the entire northwestern corner of Paldea. I didn't really have a target for this area, but I did know one thing. I was incredibly thankful that this forest still counted as the same area as the lake itself because God knows I'm not spending hours shiny hunting at five frames per second on a freaking lake again. Shout out to my shiny Tatsugiri, I love ya, but that was miserable. A few Pokemon stuck out to me as I ran through the forest. Lorantis, one of my favorite grass types, was here. Like, look at those, look at those pants. That thing is looking fresh. Another grass type and another personal favorite from Gen 9 was here too, Toad School. Although I like to call him Legs because, well, so a grass type encounter boost seemed pretty obvious for me here. And look, I'm not gonna beat around the bush. This one took a while. Not only was Lorantis not spawning nearly as much as I had hoped, the Toad Schools really only spawned a few times, like around trees, and I don't know, it wasn't really looking good. I kind of expected eventually, at this point, to run into like a shiny Fungus or something else along the way, and honestly, that would have been fine and cool, but I was getting a little discouraged after a few hours of riding around this forest. That is, until this happened. Hold up, Let, let's run that back a second. What? Okay, so first of all, I did not run into that toad school. But, but second of all, is that a shiny? Yeah, it was. The only reason I even noticed this shiny spawned in behind the tree was because this buggy game threw me into a battle 10 feet away from me and just popped it in right in front of me. And it was my boy Legs. Hey Legs. Oh. Don't worry, I caught him. Shiny number four of the Western province, and there was already just one more area left until we move on to the Eastern region. Area three was one of my least favorite hunts so far. I did not have a target. I wasn't really a huge fan of any of the Pokemon that spawned here. And honestly, the area was just kind of boring. And to top it all off, the hunts really did start taking longer and longer. And I've kind of realized now that my luck apparently comes in bursts. One day I'm getting three shinies in a row in an hour, and then the second day, there's just nothing but pain. Pain and palmies. <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen, I, I just knew it. Shiny palmy number two of the area locked challenge. And yeah, this doesn't count towards area three. I'm still stuck here. <sighs> just stay there, palmy. You're lucky you can get to stay in the same box as everybody else. After nearly a full day of hunting, I found a unique shiny Pokemon. Well, funnily enough, I actually didn't find this one, and to explain what I mean, we're gonna play a little game. It's called Find the Shiny Pokemon. I'm going to play a 10 second clip, one that 100% contains a shiny Pokemon somewhere in the environment. 
comment down below if you think you can spot it before I actually tell you the answer. Here we go. Did you see it? Well, like I said before, I didn't. And the only reason I was able to is because I was streaming in a Discord call with one of my friends and fellow shiny hunters, Blue. And he apparently has some sort of superpower because he managed to spot this mastiff in like a one second window. And even if I did see this shiny dog, it literally looks like a rock. Well, huge shout out to Blue for screaming at me to stop and turn around. He was born with better shiny hunting eyes than me apparently, and the area locked journey was saved. The final shiny of the Western province and the first of three provinces in this video was finished. The Eastern province, at least the one that I mapped for myself in this challenge, is the smallest of the four. It simply consists of three areas. Area one being a grassland, area two being more beachy and filled with rivers, and area three being a giant rocky area filled with a bunch of caves. I started here in area one, and I had a target for a shiny I've actually hunted for in every game I could since sun and moon. The color of this shiny is probably my favorite color of all time. That Pokemon? Steeny. Well, technically it was bound sweet, but Steeny spawns here. So I started making a grass encounter sandwich, and this time I'm gonna give a shout out to you guys watching and commenting. Some of you commented after watching me fail miserably on making sandwiches in the last episode and explained, I didn't actually need the top bun to get the boost that I was looking for, so allow me to present to you my first unfinished encounter sandwich. Somehow this leaves me very unsatisfied. You know, some of these wild Terra things in the overworld literally hurt my eyes to look at. Like, I feel like that one dude from SpongeBob, like, what is this? You'll also notice a lot in this episode that my game, I guess, is just breaking down more and more with random bugs and things like this magneton just hanging out in front of my screen while I'm cooking, like, uh. I also finally realized I could press down on the left analog stick on my controller to zoom my camera out a ton, which actually really helps when shiny hunting Pokemon that are kind of easy to see in the overworld. You get a lot more in your field of view and it's a bit easier on the eyes when turning the camera all over the place and stuff. How are these things so cute? I'm going to die. Steenie. Hey Steenie, what you eating? You got any more? No? All right, that's my bad, that was weird, that's on me. If you couldn't tell, this hunt was taking me a long time and I was getting pretty bored and just having fun messing around with the camera and running around when, uh... Oh, finally! Hey girl. Shiny Steeny, a personal favorite shiny in Pokemon line for me, appeared, finally. This one is definitely getting evolved and going on the competitive team and I worked pretty hard for this one, but in the meantime, it's not over. It's time for area two. Eastern Province Area 2 has one specific location that I was actually really excited to hunt. The beach. This beach has so many different types of Pokemon with tons of different species both on and off the coast. However, I had a personal target for a shiny that is really nice, and thankfully it's the only poison type that actually spawns on the beach, meaning after this incredible and delicious noodle sandwich was crafted, everywhere I looked, there were Marinis. If you guys haven't seen Toxapex's shiny form, you are missing out. It changes like crazy and is super vibrant, plus it's just a really strong defensive Pokemon in general. So I ran around this beach for hours and hours, making sure, of course, that I stopped and said hello to Moist Critical every loop, and you know, this might actually be a good time to talk about luck. RNG, the skill of finding shiny Pokemon. Now, I would classify myself as pretty lucky. At least, most of the things I post on this channel tend to be really lucky moments. But that's the thing. I cut out most of my dead time, boring hours, or unlucky moments when I'm hunting and leave in all the awesome moments, because I mean, that's the fun part. I'm not just gonna sit here and show you guys the entire 10 hour recording of me hunting for this Marini. Instead, I'll, I don't know, probably just cut right to the shine. Okay, this one was actually pretty funny because I somehow decided to go AFK right as the shiny spawned in, so. Actually, now that I'm looking at it again, I think if that thing walked a little farther back, I think I would have failed it. But yeah, I sat back down, looked at my screen, and was just like, huh, cool. <laughs> Another long day of hunting later, the luck in the eastern province still unfortunately not on my side. But I can't really complain about getting back-to-back -back targets, Steeny and Marini, going in to Area 
3. Area 3, a rocky, cave-filled region with a large variety of new and old Pokémon alike. I was actually really excited to just ride around and explore and see all the Pokémon in this area because this is one I wasn't too familiar with. I did still have a poison encounter boost from the Marini hunt, so I started to see a ton of the Pokémon Varun. These things are kind of weird, but it's good to know that I can come back here and hunt them if I ever want to. Excuse me? Can we, can we play that back again? Can we do that in slow-mo? Yeah, that, that actually happened. I got drive-by attacked by a shiny Varum about one minute into Area 3. I didn't ask for this. That thing was on a mission, and I tweeted this clip out the second I could, and I think what I said that day is still the best way to describe how I felt at the time. My shiny hunting skill has ascended to levels so high that they hunt for me now. Shiny Varum and the entirety of the Eastern Province was completed. And once again, I'm not even really the one that found the shiny Pokemon to begin with. The Northern Province, the highest level Pokemon, the biggest areas, and the final region of the area locked journey before Area Zero. I had five more shiny Pokemon still to find, and I was really motivated and hyped after that Varum encounter earlier, so I immediately headed into the first area of the north, Tag Tree Thicket. Or as I like to call it, Lag Tree Thicket. Lag Tree Thicket, if it didn't have the performance issues, would probably be one of the best looking places in the game. With all the uniquely painted trees and kind of eerie but calm vibe, this place was really cool. And despite some of the really cool Gen 9 Pokemon in here, I actually had a different target I wanted to hunt. And this target just so happened to have one of the most difficult shiny forms to spot I've encountered so far in Pokemon Violet, Mimikyu. The gray scale shiny, a great one, and not one I expected to have trouble with finding. That is, until I made this ghost type encounter sandwich that, I mean, okay, this sandwich just looks awful. This sandwich made Mimikyu's appear everywhere, which was great, until I realized that these trees cast heavy shadows on everything underneath them, and it makes Mimikyu look completely grayscale. I had never gotten faked out more in a shiny hunt than with these Mimikyu's. Like, this is a shiny, right? Nope. <laughs> oh, no, this is a shiny. Nope. See, okay, this one actually looks like a shiny, but as soon as I encounter it, I'm just gonna be disappointed again. Huh. Well, would you look at that? Shiny Mimikyu in Tag Tree Thicket in the first ghost type encounter sandwich. I was so relieved that the luck burst continued because I was gamer necking hard at my screen trying to make sure I wasn't missing a shiny. Also, I'm a little mad at this Mimikyu in particular because it ate up so many of my Premier Balls and I spend good money on these Premier Balls, but eventually we got her with only four Shinies left. Next up is Northern Province Area 1, a mountainous area spanning the northeast coast of the Paldea region. There were a lot of pretty unique Pokemon up here and I actually spent a lot longer than normal trying to figure out what I actually wanted my target to be here. Well. Remember how I said I liked Lorantis because of its cool, fashionable pants? Well, Game Freak has done it again in Generation 9, making shiny Scovelin the most dapper little dude in its shiny form with these jeans. Only problem was, after making a fire encounter sandwich, I wasn't running into as many as I'd hoped, plus there were Flareons over here too, which, I don't know, not really a shiny I was interested in going for. Well, I ended up running around looking for the old blue jeans to no avail and actually ended up changing targets midway through because I saw a familiar face, Aksu. Seemingly even more spawns than in Southern Province Area 5, which was uh, still my longest hunt in the entire challenge. I ended up getting a shiny Bagon, which was great, but I can't help but think how cool it would be to nab both of those shiny dragons I hunted for in my area locked challenge. And you wanna know what happened right after I used my dragon encounter boost sandwich? Well, I happened to find a cute little shiny Swablu. <laughs> yeah, I forgot Altaria spawned here too. So as soon as I used the boost, I was getting a ton of Swablus and yeah, I mean, it's not an Axew, but hey, it still turns into a pretty cool dragon. Area one went by very smoothly and the Northern Province was looking to be another speedy start for shinies. Area two is sort of tucked away behind the mountains and isn't really big, but it contains a lot of cool high-leveled Pokemon. 
But at this time in the hunt, I wasn't really thinking about any cool Gen 9 Pokemon or rare pseudo legendaries. I was mostly just shocked that I never realized how nice Phalanx Shiny was. I looked it up after seeing a few in the area, and I don't know if I've seen many Shinies at all turn to this brownish color, and now I wanted one. So I made my fighting type boost sandwich, ventured off into the woods, and it started raining. And you know what happens in this game when it starts raining in an area that already isn't optimized. You lag. Yeah, the Phalanx hunt didn't last very long. I ended up making another grass type encounter sandwich, hoping to maybe find Scovillains in this very- Ooh, ooh, that was close. Anyway, I was hoping I would run into some Scovillains again, and... That... Actually looks really cool. <laughs> shiny Gogoat, another Pokemon I have pretty much never used in my entire life, but the Shiny, honestly, is better than I thought. Maybe it's because now I'm a proud Shiny Gogoat owner, but this Pokemon I think is actually kind of cool, right? Or am I losing it? Either way, only two more Shinies left at this point, and the next area was the biggest in the entire Paldea region. Oh, hey Snora. Glaciado Mountain. It's a big mountain with snow and snow runs. All right, so I already have a shiny Frostlass. I caught mine literally a day after the game came out because you know, I'm a bit of a fan, but I'm actually still missing a shiny snow run in this game. So the obvious choice here on this beautiful snowy open mountaintop is to just cram myself into this tiny dark cave and hunt these conehead things all day. Only problem is for some reason I didn't have a recipe for a level two ice encounter boost. So I had to look it up and craft it myself. And of course that did not end up going well. I ended up still with a level one ice boost, which I decided to run with for a little bit and come back to the level two boost later once I felt more confident in my abilities to place things on top of each other like a normal human. Time went on and I saw some snow runs in a dark void, weird snow glitching out on my screen and got baited by a Satoddle in the shade thinking it was a shiny. All the while not really seeing that many snow runs. That ice sandwich really wasn't doing much and now I kind of wanted revenge. I wanted to make the best level two ice sandwich anyone has ever crafted in their lives. I'd done it. A successful, perfect ice encounter boost sandwich. I was ready. Snow runs as far as the eye can see. Did, did that say dark encounter? <laughs> um, it did. I was making the wrong sandwich the entire time, apparently, so that's cool. Well, uh, guess I might as well see what spawns with the dark type boost. You know, I really can't not be happy to see this guy. One of my favorite ice types and shinies in Pokemon, Sneasel and Weavile. Sneasler, on the other hand, shiny Sneasel found on my first and only accidental dark type encounter boost of the day. I've got to say, if I'm not getting a shiny snow run, this might just be the next best thing. One more shiny until area zero. Northern Province Area 3, the final area of the episode. I wanted to end this province with a bang, to find a new, unique shiny Pokemon that I had never seen before. And after searching up a few Pokemon in the area, I realized that shiny Wugtrio is just too insanely cool not to go for. I mean, this Pokemon is already kind of ridiculous, let's be honest, but a literal scarlet and violet shiny, I've got to go for it, right? Well, there are actually a fair amount of them on the beach, and I wanted to see if a water boost would help out a little bit. So I looked up a recipe for a level two sandwich, and geez, these sandwiches are just getting pathetic now at this point, aren't they? After I made the boost, I started scoping out the beach. What was I dealing with here? The number of Wug Trio looked pretty good, but I was also dealing with a few other water types like Weasel, Floatzel, and Floatzel, and um, you know, can't say this is the shiny I wanted to end the episode off of, but when one pops up 30 seconds after you arrive to the area, you can't really complain, can you? Shiny Floatzel in Area 3, the final area of the Northern Province, and the final overworld area of the Area Locked Challenge is completed. So what's next? We found 14 shiny Pokemon this episode, 7 in the previous episode, and now the only place left to hunt is Area 0. While it would be way too easy to just find one shiny Pokemon in Area Zero and finish off the series, so why not find every shiny Paradox Pokemon in Area Zero? And let's even make it a little bit more of a challenge. Oh, 
Oh, and right after I finished the challenge, I came back to get some footage and I found a Wugtrio. Here he is. 